This video will show you how to translate verbal expressions and equations. When you translate verbal expressions and equations, for the most part, you just work in order from left to right, and you use these words that are going to translate to particular operation signs. Most of the words in the chart are obvious. If it says plus, well, then you know obviously it's going to be a plus sign. Multiplication is going to be a multiplication sign. Even things like this, added to or more than, increased by, all imply the idea that you're going to be adding something. Decreased by, you would subtract. So most of the words in here are very logical. There are a couple important things you need to note. Number one, these words in this line right here, you need to memorize those because there's really nothing inherent in the word that tells you what to do. Sum means to add, difference means to subtract, Product is multiply and quotient is divide. So you need to memorize those words so that you know what operation to use. Also, when you see the words sum and difference, you might need to use parentheses. So when you see the word sum or difference, you're going to put parentheses around whatever you're going to write in. And less than and subtracted from translate backwards. I said to start with that most of this translation is done in order from left to right, but when you see less than or subtracted from, that tells you to work your way backwards. So let's look at it a couple examples. Six more than a number. Now I know this says a number. That does not mean you just make up any random number. That means six more than actually some letter. You can use whatever letter you want unless the software specifies a particular letter. So starting from the left, six of course stays six. More than is a phrase that tells us to use a plus sign more than a number x. Now six plus x is the same thing as x plus six. The order that you write this down or type it into the software does not matter. Because there's a plus sign in between there, that order does not matter. The quotient of a number in five. Quotient is one of those words I said you need to memorize. As soon as you see quotient, you can do this. You can use a division sign, but instead of doing that, I suggest you make a line for a fraction bar. And then we're going to continue in our order from left to right. We see this word a number, which means our x is going to go on the top because we saw that first. And then it says and five. That's going to put that on the bottom. So this is the same as saying x divided by five which is the quotient of a number and five. A number increased by seven, a number we're going to call x, increased by is a plus sign seven. And that's all there is to it. Two more than the product of six and a number. Starting at the left, two more than is our addition sign. Product means we're going to multiply. So I'll go ahead and put a dot there. What we're going to multiply together is 6 and some number. But we're going to clean that up because we don't need the dot in between the 6 and the x, and we're just going to write 2 plus 6x, which is the same as 6x plus 2 if you want, but you don't have to. Two more than half of a number. 2 more than is a plus. We have a couple ways to do half of a number. We can do half of means times half of a number, which is 2 plus 1 half x without the dot, and that's fine. Another way to take half of a number is to divide the number by 2, so I can just do x over 2 instead. You could do the decimal 0.5 for half of the number. You could do 0.5x. All of those are the same, and they're all acceptable. Twice the sum of 12 in a number. 2 times the sum. When you see the word sum, put parentheses, put a plus in between, and then go back to the problem and fill in 12 and x. We don't need the dot in between there, so we're going to do 2 times 12 plus x. The reason you need parentheses is if you didn't use the parentheses, you would just have 2 times 12 plus x which is 2 times 12 plus the x, you're only doubling the 12, not doing twice the sum. This is the reason we need the parentheses. 3 times the difference of a number in 9, very similar. 3 times, as soon as you see the word difference, put parentheses around there, but put a minus sign in there. 
and then follow the order here of a number. Since that came first, it goes in the first position, and 9. We don't need the dot, so it's 3 times x minus 9. The sum of 11 and a number. You can use the parentheses if you want, if you want to be consistent with, oh, when I see the word sum and difference, I will use parentheses. And I'll, but I'm going to show you why you don't need to. You put the parentheses, you put the plus, and what you're doing is just the sum of 11 and a number. Since there's nothing outside here, the parentheses weren't necessary. So really, the simplified version of this is just 11 plus x. That's why on the first screen it said sum and difference may need parentheses. Here's another one, the difference of a number and 5. I am just subtracting a number, I'll call it n this time, and 5. We do need that order though. Number came before the 5, that's why n comes before the 5 in my expression. C decreased by the sum of a and b. C decreased by the sum, parentheses, with a plus in here, and what I'm adding up is a and b. Parentheses are very important. If you didn't use the parentheses, you'd have this, which is not equal to that. The minus in front of that parentheses would distribute it to be negative a minus b, which is not what this is. So that's not the right answer. 6 less than a number. Here's the other thing on the front page I told you about. Less than tells you to translate backwards. 6 less than a number. We're in the habit of putting the 6 first because it came first, but as soon as you see less than, go reverse order. Put the minus in front of the 6 and then put the x there. And that automatically puts you in the correct order. We are making the number 6 less than it already is. So we have the number and we take away 6 from the number. That is not the same thing as 6 minus x. When there is a subtraction sign, it makes a difference what order you put something in. So this is not the right way. This says 4 less than the quotient of a number in 7. So I'm starting out from the left, 4. As soon as I see less than, I'm going to go in the reverse order. So I'm going to put the minus right there. And what's going to go in front of that minus is this quotient thing. We said earlier, quotient means divide, and you want to write it as a fraction bar. What goes on top is number, because that came first, and then 7 on the bottom. So there's your expression for 4 less than the quotient of a number in 7. It's the quotient of a number in 7, subtract so 4. 2 less than the product of a number in 12. 2 less than, start working your way backwards because of less than. Product is a multiplication. And what we're multiplying is the number and 12. Now that's strictly in that order, but that looks kind of goofy. What I want to do is this. n times 12 looks better to be 12n. You want to have the coefficient in front and then minus 2. That is the simplified version of that. Now what we've been working on are just expressions because they're just phrases. We start dealing with equations when the sentence has an is in it. It's going to be the same process, work your way from the left and go all the way through here, but is is going to be your equal sign. So what's in front of the is will be on the left side, what's after the is is on the right side. The quotient of 3 and a number. Quotient means to divide. I draw my fraction bar, I put the 3 on top this time because in the sentence it came first, then the x on the bottom, and what that's equal to is 9. So that is the quotient of 3 and a number equal to 9. Twice the sum of a number in 12, so twice, that's 2 times. Remember, sum gets parentheses, put a plus inside there. A number and 12 is 90. But I would like to clean this up and get rid of the dot, so this is 2 times x plus 12 equals 90.